We've also got to talk a little BlackRock on the morning, receiving $100,000 as seed capital for its proposed Bitcoin ETF. That was disclosed in an application to the SEC this week. The investor bought 4000 at $25 a share in October of this year. This comes about a month before analysts anticipate either one or more spot ETFs will get approval from regulators. For more on this, let's bring in Yahoo Finance reporter Jared Blickley. He's here at the desk. Hey Brad, oh, don't let me get too comfortable. This is nice. Yes. Um, and I do have the Wi-Fi Interactive here right in front of me, of course, but I'm looking at the <laughs> list of companies. You mentioned BlackRock. Mm -hmm. You look at the list of companies on the Wi-Fi Interactive that currently have uh, spot Bitcoin ETFs just waiting for approval. Here's Black. BlackRock, here's Grayscale, mm -hmm. a word on them in a second, Fidelity, Van Eck, Franklin Templeton, Bitwise, all of these guys jockeying to be the first, but it's probably going to be all of them at once, except maybe Grayscale. Now, Grayscale is the entity that manages the GBTC, that's a Grayscale Bitcoin Investment Trust, one of the few in the world, only available to private subscribers. It's a closed-end fund. They've wanted to convert it to an ETF so they can get retail investors, and they were the ones who followed the lawsuit, and they won with respect to the SEC. They beat the SEC, but it's not clear yet if they're going to be among these first movers. But as far as the date, we're looking at January 10th to January, uh, January 5th to January 10th. There are two different uh, offices within the SEC that have to clear this, uh, two different con congressional laws at work. You have the 1934 Securities and Exchange Act, and you also have the 1933 Securities Act. And uh, paperwork was, was just filed by BlackRock, and that information you were talking about, the seed investor, who's investing in this ETF that hasn't been launched yet? Well, a seed investor. This is how you start the process. And so we kind of knew that already. It already leaked out, but this is confirmation. And just another incremental step, more incremental knowledge, that this is going to happen and happen soon, early January. Jared, how much of this do you think is already baked in just in terms of the oh. excitement? And I say that with the price of Bitcoin because it has been astonishing to see the rise in the price of Bitcoin going back to the start of the year. Even within the last month, it's up another 20%. If we do see this approval, how big of a catalyst do you think? Well, you know, the, the old adage on Wall Street is buy the rumor, sell the news. I hope not because <laughs> I'm looking at the Wi-Fi interactive. Bitcoin is the crypto in general. It's the number one asset class of the year. I mean, forget the Magnificent Seven. Bitcoin up 152%. Let's take a look at this chart. In anticipation of all of this, arguably, this got started down here. I mean, we've been hearing about this for months, and but the anticipation really led to this latest launch up. We had uh, Bitcoin stuck at about 30,000. So I think a lot of this news is already baked in, but I think the momentum is there to keep Bitcoin alive. I think the winter is done. I don't think we're ever going to see 20,000 again. Mm -hmm. You can quote me on that. And I think it's off to the races. You know, it's interesting because we also got some commentary from Robin CEO, Vlad Tenev, yes. on the state of Bitcoin as well. Yeah, um, let's take a listen because Brian Sazi was able to interview him yesterday. And uh, let's take a listen. I think crypto activity, you're, you're seeing kind of a, a groundswell. Um, what tends to happen is um, uh, we've seen in the past as the price of Bitcoin uh, approaches all time highs, the media coverage and intensity uh, increases. And I think that plays a role as well, if people are just hearing more about crypto around them, uh, they tend to become more interested and, and you start to see that reflected in trading activity, at least in the past. Yeah, I think uh, we, we're not anywhere near all-time highs, so we don't have to worry about the sell the news event, top ticking Bitcoin. Uh, we've already been through that, and arguably the Coinbase IPO years ago top ticked uh, the current uh, all-time high in Bitcoin. Nevertheless, um, it looks like there's still a lot of excitement. Is it going to be a sell the news? Are we going to see a little bit of a bit of pullback, or maybe just a pullback in time? We'll have to see. And then the Bitcoin having expected in 2024 as well. Yes, That's I the next major catalyst. Too. Yeah, the April May time period that has always historically. And it only happens, what, every couple of years. Yeah. Um, the last one, we saw a huge run up in price that was mm -hmm. also funded by the stimulus payments. I mean, this doesn't happen in a vacuum. You have to consider what's happening in the economy, what's happening in people's trading's account, trading accounts. But I think uh, a lot of the damage from the bear market that we had last year is kind of in the rearview mirror. Investors are still shell-shocked a little bit. Um, it was very painful in the bond market. But crypto people, uh, crypto, I, I, I would close by saying this. They, the laser eyes, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, the laser eyes, <laughs> you know, the thoughts of Bitcoin 1 million and all these uh, Kathy Wood dreams. Um, I, 
Hey, I think I think we're going to see half a million someday, um, but it's going to take a while to get there. And this is just the beginning of this asset class really becoming. I think this is this next crypto bull run is the one that establishes it within Wall Street. That's when we see the major brokerages like Fidelity start getting into their accounts. So this is when crypto becomes big time right now. And there always seems to be their diehard fans, and there always seems to be this optimism for yes. higher highs. So we will see. All right, Jared, thanks.